Genesis family. It is day 45 of our Lenten journey through the Gospel of Mark, and our reading today is Mark chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. Yesterday, we began seeing people appear at the end of Mark's Gospel to play a brief but important role in the story of Jesus. We have seen Pilate and Barabbas, and today we see Simon of Cyrene. The Bible doesn't tell us much about him. Mark only has one verse dedicated to Simon, but we know that he's from North Africa and that he's passing by in from the country. From his name in his home area, we can discern that he is a Jewish believer in town for spiritual pilgrimage. Every adult Jewish male was commanded to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the annual feasts, of which Passover is the most important. And that's where we are in the story. But this man's Passover is interrupted. Being forced by a soldier into the drama of the day, Simon is made to carry the cross of Jesus. For all practical purposes, Simon did not know who Jesus was, but he finds himself right at the center of the greatest event in human history. Simon is the closest person besides Jesus to that cross. But his Passover is not just interrupted, it is redirected. For the sweat and blood of Jesus that would be upon Simon by carrying the cross would make him unclean for temple activities. But perhaps that's the whole point. Rather than being interrupted, Simon's spiritual journey is being fulfilled. For all those Old Testament feasts and celebrations pointed to this moment, and Simon finds himself carrying the wood upon which the real and true Passover lamb will be sacrificed. But you know, there is another Simon in the story of Jesus, Simon Peter. And he's the guy who you would think should be in this place. He was the one who began following Jesus a few years before, and we saw him just a few hours before emphatically rejecting Jesus' claim that he would deny him, saying that he would go to the death for him. But he fled, and Simon Peter is nowhere to be found. In fact, Simon Peter had heard Jesus talk about the cross, talking about how that was a requirement to follow him. If you want to follow me, you need to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. But Simon Peter is nowhere to be found, so Simon of Cyrene takes his place. Of course, that begs the question, how many of us have refused to carry the cross that Jesus asks us to carry so somebody else has to carry it? That may be one of the tragedies when we appear before Jesus, that somebody took our place in carrying the cross that we should have carried. That's a challenge for us in this Lenten season, that we should embrace the cross, because in carrying the cross, we find ourselves the closest to Jesus. Of course, Simon of Cyrene is not the only people that appear in the story. There are the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left, and if you'll notice, Mark makes sure that we know that both of these criminals were joining in with insulting Jesus. Of course, this begs the question about that one criminal on the cross that we know is converted in the other Gospels. Mark leaves him out. That's not important for Mark's storyline. He wants us to know that Jesus was feeling the weight of all the sin. When Jesus hung on that cross, he was absorbing every person's sin upon himself. Which then shows us what happens as people pass by and begin to insult him. Notice what they say, the passers-by and the religious leaders. He said he was going to save us. He can't even save himself. They are of the mistaken impression that Jesus is just like them, self-interested. And here we see that what happened on the cross was a complete act of selflessness. That's why in the most traumatic and tragic event of human history, where the most unjust situation occurs, where the most innocent person suffers the most gruesome death, instead of calling it bad or Black Friday, we call it Good Friday. Because there we see Jesus hanging on the cross as something that is completely selfless. And while the religious leaders say, if he'll come down from the cross, we will see and believe they do not understand that he had to bear that cross for their sin, for your sin, for my sin. That's why this is Good Friday, friends. 
we see Jesus hanging on the cross not for himself, but for us. And he will eventually be taken down from the cross, and he will do something even more profound than coming down from that cross. He will be buried and come up from the dead. All of that makes this particular day, this Good Friday, really good. So let's learn from Simon of Cyrene that there are times when our spiritual journeys are interrupted and redirected to the truth and the revelation of what it's all about. That we may be thinking one thing, but we encounter the cross of Jesus and we think something completely different. Let's learn from the crowds and the religious authorities and the criminals who are all around Jesus that we join in the mocking chorus by how we live. And when we come face to face with the cross, our hearts need to be changed and converted from self-interest, selfishness, to selflessness that is epitomized and manifested in the person of Jesus Christ. Friends, this is Good, Good Friday. And Easter is around the corner, but we linger long around the cross, absorbing its impact, seeing in it the glory and the beauty of Jesus, the selfless act. One last thing to mention. Jesus was offered a narcotic to drink to numb and dull his pain. He refused it because he is absorbing in himself the full weight of all our sin. That in itself was a selfless act, not somebody who is trying to avoid the pain of the moment, but is embracing it for us. Let's follow him. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for this Good Friday, and we ask that you would help us to embrace the cross that we are called to carry, the cross that is for others, the cross that you yourself carried up to a moment, and then you call us to carry it the rest of the way. Help us, Lord God, to be like Simon of Cyrene, who embraced the reality of the cross and was forever changed. Help us to understand that we are like the crowds, that we think that everyone is like us in our self-interest, and yet we see you, your beauty, your selflessness. Help us to enjoy this Good Friday for all that it is. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.